Hey everybody. Happy Thursday to ya. March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. If you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I don't think I have any Irish in me at all, but um happy St. Patrick's Day nonetheless. I wanted to show you guys something today. Can you see that? That is my warrior wound from daylight savings time. I don't know if anybody else is struggling with the change in time, but I still am in the mornings. And this week, uh, this was yesterday, I was curling my hair because I work from home and we do several um, Zoom meetings or team meetings from home. And I needed to be camera ready, so I was actually trying to put some curl in the bottom of my hair so it didn't look <laughs> like bedhead. And uh, I, curl, I was curling my hair, and that iron gets pretty hot. And I slipped. I was probably still half asleep. I slipped, and it just barely touched my face for a second. And now I have this beautiful scar or wound on my face. I'm not thrilled about it. One, because I'm a girl, and two, it hurts still. It still stings a little bit, and every time I rolled over last night, um, it, my pillow would hit that side of the face just out of habit. Boy, that thing did not feel good. It did not hurt. So I've been thinking about this wound for two days, and I thought I wanted to talk about it today because I think that we have a lot of wounded warriors still walking around in the world. Whether, whether, you know, Christian or not, life comes at us and a lot of times unexpected and it wounds us, it breaks us. And sometimes we can see them, right? It's obvious when we're, when we see people, we see their wounds, that whether it's something on their skin or Maybe there's a, dis a permanent disability, they're not walking or their own crutches, and that might be a temporary wound. It's a, a break in their bone, but we still, you can see them, right? But I also am very aware, and from my own experience, I'm aware that there are people with wounds that we cannot see. Sometimes it comes out, and people, and it's very obvious, uh, it's, Folks that are sometimes just mean, downright mean, I, I think that they are having issues in their own heart. Either they're insecure or maybe they've been so wounded in their life and they have such a distrust for others that they think if they can hurt you first and push you away, then they themselves don't ultimately get hurt and be pushed away. Don't you think? I think so. there are a lot of things that happen in our life that wound us and they can it, it, it doesn't have to be a physical wound it can be a, a a wound in our heart because we've lost someone maybe somebody passes away that we're really close to and that change is really difficult or it could be the way somebody treated us or mistreated us Maybe that's a more accurate way to put it. Or maybe we had a personal failure. Maybe there was something personal in our life where we had a failure. And so um, maybe we hurt someone else and we hurt ourselves and hurt our relationship with God. And so it's really hard to overcome that. And even though you may not see that on the outside, we carry it with us. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. Isaiah, not Isaiah, excuse me, Psalm, Psalms 147, verse 3, and it's the one I put for our topic for today. It says, He heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. He, of course, is Jesus, right? He is the one and the only one, I think, that can ever really bring us the healing that we need in our life. He is the only one that can really make those places smooth that have been rough or ragged or even jagged in our life. 
let me give you an example. When I was young, my dad was an alcoholic and because of the choices that he made, um, at, at some point he left and, and he left for good. So we had a broken family and also because of the choices that he made, other family members, it was difficult to have a relationship with them because of the choices that he made. So we lived very far and um, it, it wasn't, it, you know, it's difficult to have a strong invested relationship when you're not there to, to nurture it and water it and have that time together and to bond. So those of you who come from large families and you've got all these cousins and you've got all these grandparents that spoil you or your kids rotten, be thankful for that. Um, I'm not bitter about it. I miss it. And I, I didn't, I didn't have that. So I, I can remember, uh, when I was in Orangeburg, I always enjoyed hanging out with the Dunnings because I just, it was such a lovely chaos, right? It was just such a lovely chaos. And they have a really large family and they have a lot of fun. And, um, so if you have that, I hope that you appreciate it. And anyway, squirrel, I'm squirreling. I didn't have that. And it, I had this sort of emotional handicap in my life for such a long time to try to describe the personality I had when I was a teenager growing up and even after become a Christian when I was 16, even after that, like I, I wasn't, it was so difficult for me to fully invest in a relationship of trust with other people because I naturally distrusted them, especially men. And I was very prickly. I was very angry deep down on the inside so I could turn on you in a New York minute. Um, I was very prickly and I hated that people had to walk around on eggshells, so to speak, on me sometimes because they may not have known how I was gonna react depending on you know, how I might have been feeling that day. I wish I could change that and I can't, but I can say I'm grateful that the Lord didn't leave me that way. The point is, is I was wounded, but it wasn't a wound like you could see outright. Only if you maybe had discernment and you were mature, you could understand, given my background, why I might react the way I was or what the way I may have behaved the way I was. I'm so grateful I had a lot of people in my life later in my college years and after that that just loved me and they persistently, relentlessly loved me. But it took time. It really took time. Coming, putting your faith and your hope in Jesus doesn't auto fix us because we've had all of these things that have happened in our life that have shaped us and, and influenced the way that we behave or the way we trust and the way we respond. But I, I want to give you hope. I want to hang on to the promise of the scripture that says he does heal the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. As those people in my life continued to love on me and persistently love on me and discipled me, always pushing me, always pointing me to Jesus, that the Kathy Joe, that's the only place you're ever going to get your worth. That's the only place you're going to ever really find peace. And I actually began to investigate that on my own, meaning having prayer time on my own and spending time in prayer saying, this is hurting me. I, I don't know how to fix it, Lord. Can you help me with it? And just being raw and honest before the Lord, and that was the thing he was waiting on so that he could heal up my broken heart, so that he could bind up my wounds. So that is my so what today. I don't know what you're carrying. I don't know what wounds that are visible on you or wounds that are not visible for you. But I want to give you those promises and remind you that Jesus alone is the one that can give you purpose in healing and bring those places to a place where you can be whole again. We're not always the same once we've been through things that are tragic or hard that have wound us, but we'll always be stronger. And those things put us in places where we can minister to other people who are also 
might be struggling with those things. Psalm 34, verse 17, the righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to them that are of a broken heart and saves those of a contrite spirit. And of course, I already gave you the one in Psalm 147, 3, but let me give it to you again. He, talking about Jesus, heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. And then you can jump to the New Testament for promises there. In James chapter 4, verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? You, it doesn't have to be a flowery prayer. It doesn't have to be perfect words. It, it really is just being open and honest before God. And I can remember a time when I was struggling and the only thing I could pray was God help me. God help me. I don't even know what to say right now, but please help me. And he did and he will. I promise you, he's not going to leave you out there hanging on a cliff guessing um, by yourself or broken by yourself. If you call on him, he's going to meet you right where you are. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. And it's another good one for you to memorize. Casting all your care on him because he cares for you. If you're struggling with unforgiveness, maybe. Maybe your hurts go way back. Or maybe they happened yesterday. I don't know, but you're struggling with unforgiveness. I'd like to give you a practical tool on how to handle that and... Um, how to overcome it with the help of the Holy Spirit. One of the things that I specifically did <clears throat> with regards to that in my life to overcome some bitterness and anger issues is I sat down with a notebook, piece of paper, notebook, and I wrote everything on that paper that had ever hurt me where it, when it came to my dad. Everything. I mean everything everything not just the acts of things that that were done or behaviors that hurt me but the things that hurt me that happened as a result of that are things that I didn't have because of those choices that he made everything and um, then I spent time in prayer pouring over those things to the Lord presenting them in my prayer to Jesus and saying this really hurt me and then when it was all said and done out loud, and I, I'm telling you, you got to do it out loud. You got to do it out loud, even if you don't feel like it. Just trust me on this one. Out loud in that prayer time, I said to the Lord, Jesus, I, I don't feel like it, but I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive him of this, 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 and this. And then I took that that those papers, and it was more than one sheet, I took those papers and I threw them in a fire. You have to get rid of them. And I don't recommend throwing them in a trash can because you could always go pull them out, unravel them, and, and hang on to them. Burn them. I, I don't know why. I'm just telling you, burn them. Put them in a fire and burn them. And then every time the enemy comes back at you or your memories come at you to remind you about those things, you can say out loud, I chose to forgive those things and I'm moving on. It doesn't always happen instantaneous, but over time, that is like one of the weapons of, of bringing those things that are contrary to his word and bringing them into obedience to Jesus Christ because that's what he tells us. He says we have to forgive so that he can forgive us. And I want to be forgiven. I'm not perfect. I haven't made all the greatest, best choices in my life either. So I know I need them, and I've hurt other people. So I need forgiveness, and just like everybody else. So I have to choose to forgive so that I can receive forgiveness, but also so that I can have that healing in my life. That ball and chain isn't dragging around with me every time I'm trying to um, or have a reaction or something else happens in my life so that I can begin to bear those fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, joy peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And I can't bear those fruit in great capacity if I'm carrying around a bunch of unforgiveness and anger in my heart and I don't address it. 
the, the more you don't address it before the Lord, the, it, the, the longer it, it uh, oh, what is the word? The longer it festers, so to speak. And there are, I'm not a, a trained psychologist. I really am not. But there are a lot of people walking around with stomach issues and all kind of health issues simply because they have anger and bitterness and unforgiveness in their life. Not, I'm not saying every illness in that way is related to that, but there are some. And I would highly recommend, highly recommend, and it's going to be hard. I had a friend that did it with me, who prayed with me, held my hand. Uh, she was much older than me. Well, not much older, but she was older than me and more mature than me. But she understood the great depth of hurt and pain that I had in my heart. So if you need somebody else... Grab you a friend that you trust, a confidant, or a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, a leader, who you could say, this is something I want to do, but I don't think I can do it by myself. And they will pray with you. And then when you're done, have them pray over you and for you. I'm telling you, I really believe in my heart of hearts that God will meet you right there. And he will, according to his word, bind up your broken heart and heal your wounds. One day, this wound is going to be gone, right? It's going to be gone. It might scar. I don't know. With my thyroid issues, it might scar. It'll be a reminder to be careful what I'm doing with a hot iron. But with the things with my dad, I, I might still have a scar there. Um, and it, it, I, I can't go back in the past and change those because those are his decisions. Those were his choices, right? But I can take each day and each thing that comes to me and make a choice to be loving, to be kind, to not react in anger every time something rubs against me the wrong way that might remind me of him or not him. Or even love those people that are struggling with those choices and addictions as well. Does that make sense? I, I hope that it does make sense. Anyway, that, that is my word of encouragement to you today. If you're walking around with scars you can see or whether or not you're walking around with scars in your heart that you can't see, bring those things to Jesus. Lay them at his feet and remind him that he said that he promised that if we bring those things to him, that he will bind up our broken hearts and that he will heal us of our wounds because he is close to, as that verse said, he is close to us. We can cast all our care on him because he cares for us. If nobody's told you today, Jesus loves you. God loves you. You have a purpose and a reason. If you think about that, it's not just a meme. But it is really honestly the truth. Of all the people in all of the world, there can only be one you. And he's got a purpose and a plan to prosper you, not to destroy you, to give you a future and a hope. So listen to my encouragement bring your broken hearts bring those pieces to jesus and lay them at his feet and ask him if he would heal them and walk you through what that should look like so that you can have joy in your life and that you can move on and follow the things that he has for you it'd be so sad if you got um all the way to heaven and and there were there were all these things that he wanted to do or all of these things that he wanted to give you that you missed because you didn't bring those things to him. So do it. Do it. Do it hard. It'll be hard, but do it anyway. And yes, Crystal, you are absolutely right. Physical wounds will heal. Only God can heal the heart. Only God can restore those broken places. And I want you to experience joy. I want you to experience real abundant life. All right. I guess that's it. I've taken up a bunch of your time today. You are loved. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for listening. And um, I'll talk to you again soon.